Hello, it's Helen Godden here, and you've joined me for block one of Flower Power Quilt Along. I hope you've accessed those requirements from the photo album on my Facebook page, and that's where you'll also find the new design that we approach every second day. So let's watch this video. You're going to see how to do the tracing and how to get on with the quilting for our very first block, which is based on the tulip. So let's get started with our Flower Power Quilt Along. So here is my design printed out. Now I've made mine eight inches. Yours might come out seven and a half. Yours might come out 10. Whatever you make it, just make sure every single one is the same. Now I've got my batik fabric and I've cut out five of these in the bright color and four in a plain yellow that's going to coordinate with it to make that nine patch that's how i've decided to do it you might decide to do every block sort of rainbow batik or however you want to do it now i've got my light box and if you're going to do this up against your window you'll need to pin your fabric to the paper so there's no movement of the design and then sticky tape or masking tape that design to your window to then trace. If you're doing it up on the window, it might be hard to do it with your Sharpie. So I suggest you do it with a friction pen or a um, pencil or a marker or a panda pencil so that when you're back at your desk, you can then draw it a bit more confidently than when you're up against a window. OK, and the first thing I've done is mark my four corners. And I'm going to draw those with a ruler. So this is something to do at your desk, not at the window. Okay, now depending on the fabric you use, there is going to be that little bit of bleed. But like I always say to my students, it's going to be consistent. Okay, what you're not going to do is have your pen sit on a spot for ages because that will bleed even more. Okay, so I'm just finding that 8 inch box. This is, for me, the hardest part. It involves accuracy and anyone who knows me <laughs> knows i don't do accuracy very well that's the hard part for me over and done with okay so i'm going to trace this now so i'm using this other hand to hold hold the fabric still while i trace it Now, it doesn't matter if this line ends up getting a bit fat because any minute now I am going to stitch into this line and I'm going to be fairly grateful if it's a little bit fat. Now, this particular design, as all of them, have got some sort of a geometric shape behind it. So that I suggest you trace with a ruler. So just keep that in mind. Don't try and draw that. We're going to trace that. But I can't wait to see if some of you are going to piece that background first and then do some applique. That'd be awesome. And I know some of you are going to paint this because I've got lots of quilting friends out there that love to do my painting design. So I'm really looking forward to um, seeing those as well using the Lumiere paints on the black fabric. Now I can see that diagonal through there. I'm not going to uh, draw it. I'm just going to mark that and use my ruler when I finish the actual flower. Okay. You can see how I keep holding that fabric. It doesn't matter if you miss that line a little bit, as long as it's a flowing line, that's all you're looking for. And hey, they're flowers, they're fairly organic. So they can be a little bit fatter here, skinnier there, it's all good. Okay, so then I can see my little marker for the diagonal. And so just make sure you don't draw the line where it's going to be flower. You're only drawing on the background. So it comes along here and stops, stops. Oops, there we go. Okay, and across here, again, stopping when you hit, there's a teeny bit there, 
so that really sits in behind the flower okay right that's our first one traced so each each day when i post one of these it's going to be the same the same basic method but i'm really looking forward to seeing how everyone deals with this whether they paint it applique it do different colors i'd love to see someone hand stitch this or use a little bit of their i'll tell you what it worked lovely your ink tense pencils okay so if you went over say even this one with reds and things here and then greens here that'd look <laughs> I might even do that okay that's gonna look awesome but otherwise I'm planning on free motion stitching into this with my black thread so I'm trying to keep this super simple if all you've got some fabric a black sharpie and some black thread we're going to be able to do this and so we're going to make nine blocks and I'm going to make mine in alternating colors to make my nine patch but you could as I said do them in bright colors do them in plain whatever you like this is what I'm going with so there's the tulip okay you can see that's ready now so i'm going to put some batting under that now if you wanted to just make individual little wall hangings sure put your batting and your backing on it next but i'm planning on making this into a nine patch quilt so i'm going to do my quilting on just the batting okay and then later on we're going to join it all up as a um you know quilt as you go kind of you know one of those okay so there we go over to the sewing machine So here I am at my Sweet 16 and I've got my little block here. I've got it sandwiched. I've only needed to use um, four safety pins and it literally is a scrap of batting. But as long as it's gone past my border, that gives me options that later on I could cut back to the border or add something to the border or even leave a little section of this pretty fabric, say an inch, before I put any sashings or something. Okay, so I've got just enough fabric around the edges. Now I've just got black on my machine. I'm going to thread up that needle with my little SewMate gadget. I love it. So the first job is, if you're doing this technique with the Sharpie, is to stitch on all our black lines with our black thread to secure the whole piece. Okay, so you're stitching in the black. Doesn't matter where, just try and keep in the black. If you go out of the black, that's okay. We're going to fill all this with um, different stitching. Okay. So um, I've got the black on. I'm just going to find a spot here to start. Pull out that bottom thread. And I've got my micro foot on, which really gives me really clear vision to see what I'm doing. And I am going to free motion stitch on the black. Now, it doesn't matter if I go back over myself like there. Okay, doesn't matter if you've done on a line twice, it just builds up the, the black. Okay, now I went off target a little bit there, that's okay. Just don't overcorrect. It looks better to have a smooth line than an overcorrected line. Okay, and if you are new to free motion quilting, this is a great way to just get in there and practice. So those of you that are completely new to free motion quilting, what you might see is that I'm not rotating the job to make a curve or a circle. You keep everything straight to you and move in a circular motion as opposed to rotating the job. Okay, it's a really fine point, but that's how we do free motion. When I come up to that little diagonal, I just zap out there and zap back. So it's like we've got this road map and we're trying to go on every single road in this map, at least drive down it at least once. If we have to reverse and, you know, drive on it again, that's okay. Now 
Now you might hear I've got that machine going pretty fast, but my hands are not going fast, okay? So have your machine at least at medium or two thirds of top speed, but your hands moving smoothly and slowly. They don't have to race with the speed of the machine. This is where you could decide to use a ruler for your straight lines. Uh, you could even go across to your domestic machine and um, put the straight sewing foot on. Uh, I can't see what you're up to really, so <laughs> uh, you can do as you please. So truly don't worry about those occasional little misses. Uh, we're going to be filling this up with lots of quilting design. And quite frankly, there's always a black Sharpie to come back and you could just do a little bit of a correction if you wanted to, but truly no one's going to see all that. It's just great practice for you. So as we go on, the tulips are going, this tulip design is by far the easiest of the block. They're just going to get a teeny bit harder each day not necessarily harder but just a bit more detailed a little bit more challenging but i'm sure you're up for it and i really cannot wait to see all the variations people are going to produce so now i'm looking at my tulip design and thinking about what sh patterns what shapes will look lovely in which areas right so with my panda pencil down here i'm finding the center of that leaf and putting little markers across. Now, if you can't see your panda pencil, use something else. And here I'm going to create my flying geese. So with that pre-drawing I did, it gives me the railway tracks to be able to uh, do this and make it look extremely easy. Okay, I'm gonna come across to this one. I might just go with some parallel flowing lines. Now I say parallel, but of course they can't be completely parallel because this goes from, you know, skinny to fat. So they're gonna be parallel-ish. Okay, I like that. That's nice and simple. I'm quite happy with that one. This one I might divide in half anyway, just like a, a leaf does. Again, using that um, black Sharpie line to travel down to somewhere else. Okay, that's a nice simple treatment, that one. And now for the tulip itself. Okay, I've done two lovely big um, spirals there, but now I'm left with some awkward spots. And this is where I say, let there be half or half. Don't think you have to squeeze a whole spiral in there. Let there be half a spiral, which then will imply that it goes around the other side of that tulip. I'll show you what I mean. And if there's not even room for a half spiral, we just do an echo that fills in with similar styled patterning. OK, 
Okay, so then I want the other two sections of my tulip to look a bit different. So I might do, this is quite a triangle shape, so I might emphasize that. Okay, and then on this one, so if in doubt, there's always a place for a good old stipple. Try and keep it small and let yourself touch your stitching onto that black edge. So the black thread touches that. Don't think you have to not have the stitching touch that black. It actually, by touching it, makes it look like it continues beyond that edge. Same here. See how I went across and touched the, uh, the edges of the black? Okay, now this is where I'm going to use my friction pen or my Panda pencil, but my fabric is fairly light, so I'm opting for the friction pen just to give myself some diagonal lines here for the next step of the quilting, just so that I, I'm not saying I'm going to follow those lines, they are just there as a general guide, so I don't get myself lost, and I'm going basically parallel with that side of the triangle. So I'm just going to stitch approximately parallel-ish to those lines I've made. You can see how those um, lines that I pre-drew have really taken the guesswork out of it. Okay, so I'm going to jump stitch. I can just see here I've got to work down into this area and I haven't got any markings. So I'm just going to continue those markings. Now I most certainly could have used the um, ruler at this point for these lines, but not when I've got that micro foot on, okay? That's a big no, because that will last one stitch and you've now broken needle, broken the ruler, and perhaps thrown the timing out of your machine, and we cannot do that while we are hunkering down. So no ruler work with your micro foot, okay? That's, that's the lesson here. away that jump stitch And now see how this section here doesn't stand out very well because as it's turned out they're sort of parallelish. I'm going to work back into this to make sure it stands out a bit more. Okay so that differentiates that patterned area from that patterned area and it's added more black thread which you know takes your eye there. So there we go that's our first block. Okay, I'm going to give that an iron, and that's ready. That's today. So I'm even looking at that and thinking it might look really nice if I coloured it in with a bit of my dye or some ink tense pencil, so I might do that. Uh, or else, just as it is, it looks lovely. And then with the next block, it'll be on this, I'm going to go with this yellowy colour. So my nine patch is going to end up in the two tones. So... You can do as you like with this pattern. I cannot wait to see your variations, whether you hand stitch it, applique it, paint it, uh, embroider it, crochet it, piece it. There you go. So stay tuned each day. Come back for the next pattern. If you miss a day, it's okay. It's going to be there. And you can always come back and find that information again. So it's going to be on uh, my Facebook, Helen Godden Quilts, right here. And then we're also going to add it to Helen Godden Quilts on YouTube. 
So thanks for joining me for another blog. I'll see you in two days time for our next instalment for our Flower Power Quilt Along. See you all soon. Education and inspiration from HelenGodden.com.